Today, we'll review the five best tips to harness the power of metabolic health in the current healthcare system. Don't miss out any of our discussion to break the myth of metabolic health and how providers are thinking about health care treatments the wrong way. Private practice owners, it's time to change the status quo that says healthcare workers are always burned out and never have enough time or energy. Welcome to the Provider's Edge podcast. I'm your host, Sabrina Rumbach. I am a provider, an international peak performance keynote speaker, and a best selling author. My guests and I teach providers operational efficiency, how to reduce provider fatigue and increase patient satisfaction. If you're ready to rewrite the rules for your own practice so you can have more time off, a great team, and more income while delivering better patient care, you're in the right place. This is your defining moment to be a disruptor in healthcare. What are we talking about? It's the option that we feel like in medicine is what do we call our patients? Patients, right? They need to be patient with us because we still have to figure out how to help them. And sometimes when we feel like there's no absolute options, then surgery become the option. But why do we have to wait until people become a surgical candidate to do something? And really, at time, we even turn people down when they're too critically ill. And so for those of us who are trying to help our patients to really get to the better state before they get on our table, that's where Dr. Philip Ovidia comes in. And I'm so glad that he's joining us, who has graduated from Jefferson Medical College and then completed a general surgery residency at UMDNJ, Robert Wood Johnson Medical School, and a cardiothoracic surgery fellowship at Tufts New England Medical Center. After 15 years of practicing as a cardiac surgeon, Dr. Ovidia came to realize the importance of metabolic health after overcoming his own lifelong battle of obesity. And now he runs a telemedicine practice and called Ovidia Heart Health. He focuses on improving metabolic health and teaching people to stay off my operating table. And this title is also his recently published book. Thank you so much for joining us, spending time with us, and I'm sure our audience, and we also thank you, right, for listening because you choose to be here for yourself. Hi, Sabrina. It's so great to be here with you and really excited to have this conversation. Obviously, you have an intimate knowledge of the world that uh, I exist in and uh, the cardiac surgery world. And more and more what I've come to learn as I've gone throughout my career is how much power we all have to help people to stay healthy and not end up on our operating table. Exactly. And it's so much, I feel like medicine has become more open to not just meds, right? Like, oh, there's a pharmaceutical alternation. So, well, you just need to do some therapy, but it's a lot more than that. And uh, yes, in some ways, it's our job security in a way, right? But we don't want to be in that position. So I love it that you are in a position of saying, hey, I want people to know better way to live and seeing what what are the challenges, what are the myths when it comes to their health. Not everyone can just keep this certain diet and keep this exercise and they're all set, right? So what are some of the myths you feel like people commonly throw out there that you like to break? There are some popular myths that are not only delusional to normal people, but also to doctors, nurses, and healthcare-related professionals. Whenever a patient consults with a physician, a specialist here should be able to convey the right information, eliminate disbelief, and guide towards correct path. Your patients somehow believe that they don't have control over their health. They need to be relying on their healthcare professionals and the healthcare system itself to keep them healthy, to keep themselves healthy. 
They need to be able to take active role, besides just being a passive participant. They always have something to do about their own choices. Yeah, the first myth that I always get people to try and break is that, you know, that they somehow don't have control over their health. Uh, that they need to be relying, you know, on their doctors, on their healthcare system to keep them healthy. And the reality is, is that each one of us has the power within us to take charge of our health and to find the tools, find the habits that are going to keep us healthy. Or even in the case if we already have diseases like type two diabetes or high blood pressure, that these are oftentimes reversible. When people take that action, but you can't just be a passive participant in your own health. You need to be taking an active role. Right, it's that extreme ownership of our own self, right? Like our own behavior. Instead of saying, "Oh, I just need to be consistent. Oh,、uh, I just need to be more motivated," but、uh, not seeing the consequences of your inactivity or really facing the truth of. Maybe it's genetics. Maybe it's the external environment you're in. But we still have to do something about how we make our choices. And do you feel like、uh, healthcare professionals nowadays are more likely to refer people out to people like you who are talking about metabolic health, or、uh, people are specifically in nutrition or life coaching on their decision making? Do you see that happening right now? You know, I am encouraged that the you know sort of metabolic health movement is gaining some traction and is growing, but unfortunately, it still remains a very small aspect of healthcare. And I think that our healthcare system is so overly focused on treatments, on how to take care of sick people, that we really don't pay nearly enough attention on how to prevent people from getting sick in the first place. Yeah, and let's us dive deeper into what metabolic health is. I believe if we just get a little more clarity, and some of us maybe never heard of it, so how could we refer patient out if we don't even understand ourselves? So, would you like to give us some rundown on what are some of the major things you would like people in the healthcare field to know? Yeah, so you know, at its root,、uh, metabolic health basically refers to the body's ability to be properly utilizing the inputs that we are giving it, and you know, the majority, the the major input that we put into our bodies is the food that we are eating. And when someone is metabolically healthy, their body is properly processing those inputs. And typically, you know, we do one of three things with the food that we eat. Uh, some of it gets immediately turned into energy to be fueling all of the activities that、uh, go on in the body. Some of it is used to build and rebuild our tissues, another process that's constantly going on within our bodies. And then a little bit of it is supposed to go into storage in case there are times when food's not available. Historically, we weren't eating all the time. Although today we've gotten to a point where many of us are eating. Just about all the time, and so what ends up happening is too much energy gets stored. That stored energy never gets utilized, and that starts to kind of spill over and have toxic effects throughout our body. And ultimately, metabolic health is at the root cause of most of the chronic diseases that we face today. When you look at things like diabetes, heart disease, Alzheimer's disease, many forms of cancer. These have all been related to poor metabolic health, right? So it's really pay attention to what do we put in our mouth, and because our body changes then up, and since we are all different genetic making in some degree, and it, it processes differently for us, and do we even know how that is working? Right? Isn't that the biggest question? Is is the breakdown of the system, or some people worry about the toxicity? Right, that we're consuming. So, what are some things that we should be paying attention to?、Uh, maybe some tips that we should be sharing with our patient, or even just for us to take on those role of, hey, am I doing that? Am I doing a harmful thing to myself? I didn't even know of. Yeah, exactly. You know, I think first and foremost, you know, as healthcare professionals, we should be modeling good behavior. We should be. 
demonstrations of health. And unfortunately, way too many, way too many of us aren't. Uh, I know for a long period of time, you know, I was a very unhealthy doctor. I was morbidly obese. Uh, I was pre-diabetic. And, you know, I was following the same advice that we all learned in medical school about that and that we would give to our patients uh, to eat less, move more, you know, eat a low fat diet and according to the U.S. dietary guidelines. And it was failing me and it was failing my patients. And thankfully, I came to learn about metabolic health and, you know, some different thoughts around why we get obese and why we get unhealthy. And I had been now been able to, you know, use that personally and also be a good role model for my patients. Uh, and that's what led me to write the book. And, you know, that's what has led me to start the telemedicine practice so that I can now help as many people as possible to stay off of my operating table and stay off of other surgeons' operating tables as well. Which is a so exciting work. Uh, and I would love to also say you're very right. There is a study, I believe, they says more than 45% of primary care physicians are obese. And they also look into patients' perspective when they talk to their doctors who are obese and actually feel more judged um, because we have these mirror neurons. We learn by seeing and doing. Even we don't think people are watching, they are. So, uh, of course, uh, when we have to position ourselves in a better spot, it's the best. So what would be the top three things you will show your clients when you're working with them first, uh, whether it's a telemedicine visit or when you go to corporate organizations to share with them those key things to get started with. Your patients need to have the right mindset to bring the long-term benefits of sound metabolic health. They must understand that small, healthy diet changes must be aligned with a long-term goal to create habitual habits. Whenever they focus on the short-term goals, when they couldn't keep up with their short-term goals, they will lose their dietary routine, which will end up to where they were before. They might feel that they're mentally unable to keep up if they could not take smaller steps. Therefore, consistency and small steps are important. The choices that they make can be very simple. We can eat more things that grow in the ground. Our animal products and our plant products are as close as their natural form as possible and eliminate processed food to get metabolically healthy. Yeah. So, you know, in the book, I outlined seven principles of metabolic health. And the first principle uh, is really a mindset uh, type principle. And that's that you, we need to think of our health as a system, not as a goal. I want people not to be so focused on the short term goals. Many people are just, you know, want to lose let's say 20 pounds. And when you focus on a short-term goal, one of two things is going to happen. Some people are able to meet that goal and they lose the 20 pounds and they say, great, you know, I did what I needed to do. And then they tend to drift back to their old habits and they end up gaining back the weight and usually more. Other people aren't able to meet that goal. And then they get down on themselves and they kind of get discouraged and they just give up and they say, I might as well go back to what I was doing. So instead, what I try to get people to do is focus on the big picture. If you tell yourself you want to be healthy, you want to be metabolically healthy, and then find the habits that are going to support metabolic health. And the next important principle that goes along with that is that first and foremost, the way to be metabolically healthy is to eat real food. I say eat whole real food, eat the things that grow in the ground, and then eat the things that eat the things that grow in the ground. Our animal products, our plant products, as close to their sort of natural form as possible, and eliminate the processed food, eliminate all the stuff that comes in boxes and bags and has these long ingredient lists. And that is the basic principle that is going to allow people to get metabolically healthy. 
Right. And do you feel like nowadays there are some bigger movement into organic food product and uh, to really understand that, yes, we don't want to have the preservative, anything coming in the box or can, you probably should stay away from, right? The natural things. And how important do you feel like we should really pick all the organic labeled produce and food going to these organic markets versus just go to any of the corner store or farmer's market that you see? Yeah. So, you know, the concept of organic uh, foods is good. The problem in practice is that the labels don't necessarily mean much. And you really have to go beyond that uh, to figure out, you know, is this a good sourced product or not? Uh, But even, you know, kind of stepping back uh, uh, a little bit from that, um, mostly the food that you should be eating shouldn't even need a label. Uh, you should know what it is. You know, it should have one simple ingredient or, you know, maybe a couple of simple ingredients combined. And that, you know, eliminates a lot of the problematic things that are in our food supply these days. And those being the highly processed carbohydrates and the fake oils, the vegetable and seed oils that have become so prevalent in processed food. So the more that you can just take simple ingredients yourself, and then, you know, maybe combine them a little bit, you know, into a recipe when you eat them, the better your health is going to end up being. Yes. And I think that also takes some creativity. Once you buy all these food, what do you do with them? Right. And I believe like back in the days when I was doing bodybuilding training, it doesn't matter how much season I put on, right? Like it doesn't add the carbs, but it make my food taste good. Um, but then you become more regiment of I need to eat five meals a day and this is how I'm measuring. But not everyone can be that specific, but people who are diabetic or you have a certain health care disease, yes, take better control of that, right? And those time can be spent with family and make a activity out of it, right? Trying the new recipe that someone created that matches your dietary restrictions. I feel like that could be a bonding experience that adds on into how you want to live life and instead of just chores per se. Do you feel like there are some common issues that people come to you and and trying to figure out what it means to live in the best way uh, and pay attention to their metabolic health? Yeah, you know, certainly, uh, you know, one of the most common issues I deal with is heart disease. Uh, You know, obviously, my background uh, as a heart surgeon and and still being an active heart surgeon, people oftentimes seek me out because of my knowledge around heart disease. But what I've come to discover in this journey is, you know, the same thing that addresses people's heart disease is going to address many of the chronic medical problems that they are facing. So people with heart disease oftentimes have diabetes, have high blood pressure. And it turns out that all of these conditions have the same root cause, and that is poor metabolic health, mostly from the foods that they are eating. So by focusing on and fixing one aspect of their health, perhaps the heart disease, a lot of them end up getting off of their diabetes medications, getting off of their blood pressure medication. And when they fix their metabolic health, most of their other kind of health issues that they didn't realize were necessarily related all get better at the same time. And that is the power of focusing on metabolic health. Which is amazing because we know everything is interconnected, uh, not only our health, but everything that we do in life. Uh, it's uh, part of, it's not where one entity, we're actually connected to our environment, to the choices that we do, and even how we work, right? How we function, how we perceive an attitude toward what we want to achieve. Would you say that, uh, of course, your work, and now you have a telemedicine clinic, do you take into people's specific body type or what are the, some of the factors to build them and educate them to the right choices of food? Yeah, you know, there certainly is individual factors that go into, you know, what is going to be the best sort of dietary strategy for you. And again, you know, in my book, I go through a lot of the popular sort of diet plans of the day. uh, And that includes everything from vegan to carnivore and, you know, things like paleo and Mediterranean 
and other low carb diets. And I talk about what can be metabolically healthy about each one of them and what may not be so metabolically healthy about each one of them. And I hope, you know, that gives people a framework to kind of figure out what works best for them, what suits their personal preferences in terms of what you eat, their lifestyle. There may be some religious and ethical, you know, concerns that come into this. But ultimately, what I want people to do is sort of keep their eye on metabolic health as the measuring stick. And if you are eating in such a way that your metabolic health is improving, that is something that I am fully supportive of. And I, and I do work with literally both vegans and carnivores. But if whatever you're doing is not improving your metabolic health, then you, know, you need to reevaluate that and see what changes might need to be made. Which is awesome. So you, when people come to you, if I get it right, you take their information, give them a very catered plan based on their um, individual preferences, religion preferences, and you build it out to give them the, those options. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, exactly. You know, I like to emphasize to people, you know, that I'm not there to tell them what to do. I am there as a physician to educate them. You know, our role as physicians should be to educate people and to help them make the choices that are going to be best for them. Um, you know, as, as you know, you know, stepping back to our sort of heart surgery world, uh, you know, there are patients who clearly can benefit from heart surgery, but for whatever reason, don't want to undergo heart surgery. And it's not our job to make them, to force them to undergo the surgery. It's our job to educate them about their choices. And if ultimately they decide not to have heart surgery, then I'm going to work with that person to figure out what the next best option for them might be. And the same principle, you know, can be applied to all of our healthcare choices. We as physicians shouldn't be here to force people, to mandate people to do things. We are here to educate people and to help them make the best choices for their all of the factors in their life. Right, because we're here to support them, even though we have more years of knowledge in this specific cohort of physical health. And also in terms of what you emphasize, which is so crucial, is our mental fitness. How well are we seeing ourselves in the world, in what we're we doing? But we're not here to simply tell, right? We're not just another authority. And I think that's so crucial when it comes to how we master ourselves as well, right? As a leader, as a significant him partner for our family and uh, at the end of the day it's like how do we master ourselves to be the best resource for those around us and for you you've been exploring also teaching and speaking with corporate companies and i think that's even uh, also very crucial that uh, only a few percentage of majority of workforce are with multiple comorbidities but they are also drive up the healthcare cost. And so if we can help and focus, even we can educate everyone, but focus on those ones who truly need to have a faster improvement, and then it can actually turn things around and reduce healthcare costs for even just that one organization. And we don't have to sometimes feel like we need to change the world. We need to help the whole entire community. We can just help the people who are naturally attracted to us and come into our clinic, into our door, because that's who we're here for, right? Um, and then to know, especially you pointed out very crucially, let's not have a such big goal that you feel like, oh my God, I didn't lose that way, or I did lose that way, what's next, right? Like a constantly feeling like you're catching up <laughs> with yourself. And that's one of the major thing that I ask our speakers to do is that we can be individual experts in that one field, and it could be multiple field, but it's very hard to be an expert in everything in life. That's just not human. And if we say we can do everything perfectly, well, that's amazing, but probably saints are that way, or even saints probably cannot be that way, right? So I asked our speaker to do a quick three-minute reflection 
where they think their whole life is. So Dr. Uh, Ovidia, when you saw your result, when you're thinking about uh, your life, anything pop into your head, anything that you say, hey, I did so well, I'm gonna keep doing, or there's a, something that I can change too. Yeah, so I think like many, um, you know, busy healthcare uh, professionals, you know, I certainly struggle with the, uh, you know, kind of turning work off. And uh, especially now that, you know, I have really two busy, uh, you know, but separate professional lives, um, the, the heart surgery world and the telemedicine uh, part of my professional life, um, you know, it, it sometimes does become gif difficult to turn that off, uh, but I have certainly, you know, made intentional efforts. Uh, I have structured my life, my professional life, in such a way now that I do have dedicated, you know, family time, and uh, I have time to focus on those other aspects of my life. And I would certainly encourage other people to do the same. And you know, one other important point that I would make is that when I did address my own poor health when I was able to improve and get metabolically healthy, it became a lot easier to be sort of well-centered and, you know, focused on the other aspects of my life. Uh, people don't necessarily realize when they are unhealthy, how hard it is being unhealthy and what effects that has on every aspect of their life, how they interact with people and, you know, how they are at work. Uh, all of these things, you know, suffer when we are not healthy on the inside. Uh, so, you know, one of the other powerful aspects of metabolic health is just a general improvement in your overall well-being, in your mental health, uh, in your interactions with others. And uh, I find that to be, you know, particularly uh, powerful and helpful for me. In today's episode, we focused on the importance of metabolic health and discuss different aspects of it. First, our speaker focused on helping us to understand what metabolic health is and the popular stereotypes of this, where he wonderfully presented that with our right vision, we can easily achieve sound metabolic health. Then he discussed the present scenario of the healthcare system, where a huge portion of it only focused on sick patients and Hardy talks about the prevention side of it. In the following part, he presented that what we put into our body greatly affect our metabolism. Our consistent consumption of unhealthy foods can lead us to many critical health conditions. After that, Dr. O shared some tips to keep us metabolic healthily sound. He shared some principles on metabolic health which are briefly described in his book. Here, we're also talk about most common issues due to heart-related diseases, which are seen to be interconnected with metabolic health. Last but not least, we talked about the framework of where people with different lifestyles and preferences can choose as an ideal diet for the improvement of their metabolic health. Amazing. I know people are going to want to hear more about this. We can talk about this for a long time. But for any of you who wanted to read Dr. Ovidia's book, he actually is going to give out a chapter for you. So check out the show notes so you can grab it. And also for you to do a self-assessment on where your metabolic health is. I believe that will be one of your questions when we talk about it, but how do we assess, right? And in healthcare, we always wanted to have some measurable baseline so we can compare it to. And that's how we can see, did I actually change anything at all from what we're doing? So make sure you check in the show now to grab all those amazing resources. But otherwise, uh, Dr. Ovidia, how else would you like people to contact you if they just wanted to have a personal consultation with you or refer patient to you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, everything is at my website and it's uh, obadiaheartthealth.com, O B A D I A, heartthealth.com. And then on social media, I'm most active over on Twitter at iFixHearts. And I can also uh, be found on uh, Instagram at Ovadia Heart Health. Perfect. Ovadia Heart Health. Check 
out the website, check out his work, connect with him, and、uh, you will get so much more than、uh, what we see just right now. And I believe, even though we have nutritionist in hand and learning about different modalities, is always great to see where are you right now, how you can. Continue to support your patients than just your existing resources. Until next time, bye, guys. I hope you liked today's episode. You're listening to me right now. Odds are you're frustrated by how healthcare practices are running today. I'm with you. I'm looking to change the conversation that we're having in the healthcare industry. It starts with me, and it starts with you. I want to connect with you and get to know your struggles and success within the healthcare industry. Visit sabrinarombag.com/connect, where you can send me a direct message. She really gets the conversation. She understands. She's an incredible listener. We were talking about worthiness, and she really understands the concept of it, how it affects people in their businesses, in their clinics. In in their daily life and their relationships, so I just want to encourage you to one listen to our show, but to jump on board and start listening to this woman because she has so much insight and wisdom that you don't want to miss out. Take an opportunity to meet with and talk with Sabrina. She's just a wealth of information and powerful results. And it, it, for myself, just to be able to reflect and see what she's created by her forms and processes is amazing. I can't、uh, emphasize enough. It's time well spent and、uh, money well invested. And so take the time, invest in yourself. My experience is really, really unique because I started with Sabrina when I was still finishing up chiropractic school. And、uh, have gone through it during my break, and I'm now a practicing doctor. So everything she's learned has been, or everything I've learned and she's taught has been applied at different levels and portions of my life. And I feel like I can continue to、um, grow and develop these skills in the future. So I was able to do the one-on-ones as well as the group sessions with Sabrina, and both had some really impactful things to teach me. There were a lot of things in there. I look at the chart of the desire zone because I was taking on too many things. I was doing too many things outside of my desire zone, and that allowed me to hone things back into the direction where they should be. What were some other things? We our first call that we ever had. There was a quote that you made. You gave me from the Dalai Lama, and these are simple things. I did, but it was about gratitude, and it hit me at that time because I'd forgotten to be grateful about what has been built. You know, everybody around me that sees what we're doing, or you know, sees what I'm doing here, my peers and colleagues, they're very grateful. What I've been doing there, like、oh, this is great. You know, would love to be in the position I'm in, and I forget that, but I forgot it. Take out your phone, type in sabrinarombag.com/forward/slash/connect, and let's have a conversation. I would love to hear your story.